Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a good morning. In today's video, we are going to answer a question from one of the users of the channel. His name is Casey West. And his question kind of revolves around uh, what exactly are employers looking for when they ask you to provide sort of a code sample. So let me kind of read off his question here first and then we'll kind of get into the details. All right, so Casey West says, hey Brian, I have followed you for quite some time now and uh, taking your Instagram Firebase course. Awesome, by the way. Hope for pagination soon. Uh, we'll get there. And his question is in the second paragraph here. Uh, I actually have a few different interviews coming up for iOS developer positions. Uh, they have asked for a code sample and I was wondering what would you hope for? What techniques you may look for if you are hiring? I hope to hear from you. I really appreciate you helping me reach my goals of becoming an iOS developer. So Casey, thank you very much for leaving this comment. And to kind of give you an answer to your question, a lot of different companies are kind of looking for different things when they're interviewing for developers, right? And basically when they're asking you to provide a code sample, uh, what they're really trying to do is to first check to see if you have clean code, whether or not you follow best practices, and also whether or not you follow like good coding conventions. So basically today I have a project kind of prepared to kind of show you what I look for uh, in terms of best practices and I'll go through the project with you guys right now. All right, so what I have prepared for you guys is this project inside of Xcode 9 beta and it's a very simple basic UI collection view controller app. So I'm going to run this to demonstrate what exactly this simple application does and it doesn't do very much. Uh, all it's doing is renders out four collection view cells in the red. And then we have a couple of items inside of our navigation bar at the very top. So again, very basic and very simple. i me just move that out of the way. And I'm gonna use this project to show you guys a couple of different things that I would consider best practices and good kind of coding conventions to follow. So the first thing is what I have in this file called bad variable names. And right here we have var x equals Harry Potter and let str equals San Francisco, California. So why is this bad, uh, bad code? Uh, basically, when you are using variables such as x, it's not very meaningful exactly what x means. So instead of using x, you should probably say something like either name or you know character name, something like that. And for San Francisco, California, this is another string. So you should name this such <coughs> to something else such as location name or city name, uh, California state name. It makes a lot more sense when you're looking at it from kind of a, an outsider's perspective and you have a better understanding as to what the program does with more meaningful variable names. So that's the first thing that I see uh, way too often that I would hope people start to kind of learn to get away from. All right, so let's actually move on to the view controller code of our project. And the second thing I want to talk about uh, kind of revolves around long methods such as this one inside of view to load. And when you have a lot of uh, tasks inside of one method, you can usually separate them into two different methods, uh, two smaller methods. And you'll see right here, we're, we're setting up the navigation uh, bar with the products title, the sign out button on the left, and then the refresh button on the right. And then on the bottom section right here, we're setting up the collection view with the cells, the headers, and the background color of white. And what we can do to make this a lot better is to separate this into a different method. And inside of Xcode 9, you can do something called extract method, which takes all that code and it puts it inside of this thing called extracted func. And what you can do is to now rename this guy and you can call it perhaps uh, setup nav bar. And now viewed at load has this one function over here called uh, setup nav bar, which is all of this code right here. And you can do the same thing with this code, but for whatever reason, uh, highlighting this section, you can't use the extract method. So I don't know exactly why, but I would instead create it myself with file private uh, function setup collection view perhaps. And I will cut all of this code right here and put it inside of that function right there. And then finally, you can just call it with setup collection view and get the spacing correct. And now view to load contains two smaller methods, which is uh, above right here and right here. And your code is now a lot cleaner. 
So let's move on to the third thing, which is also something that you should uh, be concerned about. And inside of setup collection view, we have this register method that registers these red cells for our collection view. And it's using this uh, raw string cell ID. And then down here somewhere where it says cell for item, it also uh, dequeues that cell using that string. And the problem is if you change this perhaps to a lowercase i, and then you run the application, you'll notice that it just crashes because the string is different. So let me just give you the crash right here so you see the crash. And that's a major, major problem that uh, can be avoided if you just, instead of using this raw string, let me just change it back, you can give the uh, cell identifier a string perhaps like this, cell ID equals cell ID, and then you just use the cell ID instead of the raw string. And this is what I do in most of my tutorials, if not all, and this way it is very, very easy to kind of just fix your code so that it's, uh, for the most part, it's kind of bulletproof now. And that's the cell ID, and you would do the same thing for the header ID. So let me just cut that and let header ID equals that perhaps. And then you just use the header ID like so. Now you can change this to whatever you want. And the program, if you run it again, uh, it's not going to crash just because you changed the strings characters. So that's what you get. You get your collection view like that. All right. And the next thing you want to kind of do and you really want to pay attention to is the actual cell classes that you might be registering, perhaps for a collection view or a table view. And the cell right here, the cell class name is actually cells. Let me just jump to the definition. And I see this a lot. Uh, it's kind of surprising at the same time because these cells should have a more meaningful name such as perhaps product cell, right? That's a more meaningful name and this should probably be product header or whatever you want to call it. All right, moving on here, uh, take a look at the console and you'll see a lot of these print statements that say returning the number of cells in the section as well as a dequeuing cell and then using it to render in the list. And basically it's here and here that we're printing out these statements. And I see this way too often and basically the uh, thing about this is that you should actually delete these print statements as you are uh, getting more and more used to uh, how I guess UI kit works. And basically when you have a lot of these unnecessary print statements, you start to obscure the ones that are important and the print statements that you really need to pay attention to. Kind of get, It gets lost inside of this sea of uh, useless information. So that's one really important thing that I guess developers, senior developers look for. Okay, so let me go ahead and try to move on to something else that I see way too often, unfortunately. And I'm gonna show you what it is by opening up this person.swift file right here. And right off the bat, a lot of you guys probably already noticed that this file right here follows the incorrect naming convention. And this really needs to be a capital P like that. And I'm not exactly sure why people don't follow this naming convention, but uh, I see this a lot. You want to make sure the model object also starts off with a capital letter. So make sure to do that. And let's dive a little bit deeper into this person struct model. And some people like to name their variable or properties for their structs with all caps. I'm not exactly sure why, but it really needs to just be lowercase like that. And follow uh, camel casing is what we call it. So what does camel casing look like? Well. This job title is camel cased, but the problem is the first letter needs to be lowercase like that. And sometimes I'll see job underscore title like this. Uh, this isn't the proper naming convention that uh, Swift follows. So you, you want to make sure you just have lowercase as the first letter and then the capital letter for every word. Okay. And the reason why you know how to follow that naming convention is if you go into perhaps view controller and jump to the definition, so what is this guy? Jump to definition. Uh, these properties in here, collection view, it is lowercase like that and then capital V like so. All right, so back to person. Uh, one very subtle thing that you should notice is that this last variable, age, uh, is a double, okay? So what does that really mean? Well, uh, the age, can be specified now as a, let's say, let p equals person, like that. 
with the name of perhaps myself and YouTuber and the age you can specify as, I don't know, 99.5 if I'm 99 years old and a half. And you can actually do that, but for the most part, when you guys are constructing these model objects and you're talking about a person's age, you usually uh, should use something like an integer instead. And if you try to build this, this no longer works because this needs to be an integer of 99. Now, what is the point of that, right? What difference does that really make? Well, if you use a double, the actual amount of memory that it takes to uh, hold a double in memory is a lot larger than just a regular int. I can't remember if it's 8 bytes or 64 bits or whatever, but it's a lot more than what you need. So you should actually just use an int because that's what's commonly referred to uh, for age. And finally, let me go ahead and move on to something else that is probably considered more nitpicky. And I want to take a look at these two braces right here. And uh, because Apple's convention follows this brace convention where the brace is actually on the same line as where the, I guess, the model object is declared, you want to follow this convention instead of this right here. And the reason why this is important is because inside of uh, even Apple's projects as they give demos, uh, the way that they write their code, so let me just pull out this right here, this is their augmented reality code, they use that convention where the brace starts on that same line. Kind of like that and like that. And their method names do the same thing. If I can find the method name right here. So this is the starting brace. Okay. So the if statements that you write, for example, this right here, if, you know, this equals world, and let me just use another brace here. I see a lot of people using this right here. But uh, it's my opinion that you should probably follow whatever Apple uh, decides to use. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Make sure to leave a comment down below as to what kind of best practices you guys follow and what kind of best practices that I should be aware of. And don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed today's video. And also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. In the next video, I think I'll probably talk about what types of projects you should include inside your portfolio as you are applying for new jobs. That's going to be it for today. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.